Welcome to All Villa, No Filler. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. This is Rivalries, the show where we meet fans from rival clubs. Villa are due to play Sheffield United on Friday. If we win, my goodness, we go top of the Premier League. To chat about that, I'm joined by a Sheffield United season ticket holder. It's not Sean Bean, but it's the next best thing. Christian Irwin, my former midfield partner at Sheffield University. Such great memories playing with you, Christian. And would you believe this man is also an actual OBE. Unbelievable, illustrious company we have here on the All Villa No Filler podcast. Christian, welcome back to All Villa No Filler. Thank you very much, Frankie Maguire. Good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm getting every time I see it, I get flashbacks to the goals we used to score together at Shepherd Junior, terrorizing <laughs> every six aside team you ever came across. Wow. Uh, well, but um, speaking of being terrorized, Sheffield United this season, it's been a bit of a struggle. What's yep. what's you know, your bottom of the league, so I think it's fair to ask what's gone wrong. Um, well, I think they think we've terrorized anyone, have we? I think we've been there, we've been pretty, pretty pathetic. It's been a uh, it's been a poor show um, back in the Premier League. Um, so where has it gone wrong? So um, if you cast ourselves right back to the start of the season, uh, losing Ilman and Dai and Santa Berger, um, the, the, the week that the season started uh, without any uh, initial plans to replace those two individuals, I think was a you know it was, got us off on the wrong foot. I don't think that's the reason why we've been as as terrible as as we have been. But that was a, a pretty Pretty good, dreadful start for us, losing some of those key players that got us promotion last season. Um, team team clearly unsettled as a result of that. Um, lost that first home game of the season, uh, and you know we just went on that kind of really poor run of of losing every game until we managed to to get a two all draw at Everton. And you thought, well, are things about to change? You know, we're getting a bit of momentum under us. Um, got that last minute win at Wolves. In the ninety seventh minute, mm. with, a, with a penalty that probably probably never was, then snatched the draw away at, at, at Brighton, um, which was you know starting to show a bit of fight. But then you know, the hammering from Newcastle eight nil was a low point, uh, a very low point, mm. and you know then going on to lose to you know our rivals at the bottom of the table. You know, there was no other option really for other than for either Hacking Bottom to put his hand up and say, you know, it's not been good enough. I need to go or or for the club to get rid of him. So, yeah, I think you know, we've seen a bit of a bounce back with Wilder coming in. Um, mm. it's good to see Chris Wilder back. I wasn't too sure to start with what kind of reaction he'd have, but you know, we picked up um, we picked up a good a good win against Brentford for the week. Um, lost 2-0 against Liverpool at home and Chelsea away, but you know, we actually showed some fight, which we haven't shown this year. And that's very unlike a Sheffield United club that I've known and loved my whole life. Yeah, very unlike the Sheffield United that I've sort of got to know and like so ever since being at Sheffield University. You know, we used to go to Bramall Lane together quite a bit and I always sort of keep on top of Sheffield, really. I like to see how they're doing. Um, but, you know, with Chris Wilder back, um, are you, you know, you, you sort of said that at first you weren't massively excited about it, but, you know, do you think he might be able to get you out of trouble potentially? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the reason why I wasn't, you know, he, he was, he was, he was with us when we were going down a, a couple of years ago. Um, mm. uh, obviously, parted ways with the club. Kind of um, had a bit of a fallout with everyone at the time. Kind of he, he he walked away when the club was in difficulty. So I think you know that upset quite a lot of, of fans, and I thought a lot of people were a little bit unsure about him coming back. You know how how that would that work with the owner? And um, but actually, um, I think they did a really good job of addressing that. And I was at Bramall Lane for the Brentford win. Um, the reception he received, I think he, he, you know, he understands the club. He's a Sheffield United fan. Um, it, you know, it feels like the only way we can motivate our club is to bring Sheffield United fans, Warnock and Wilder, of our probably our two most successful managers. So, <laughs> you know, he certainly still stirred some of the emotions and. Uh, what what he's done is like looking at how we performed the other night was that he the intensity of our play was was, was far higher. You know, really chasing absolutely everything. Interceptions. Mm. Well, we actually looked like we were creating some chances. We I mean we only won one nil against Brentford, but we, we actually, you know, we we started getting forward. Um, you know, we battled hard against Chelsea, battled hard against Liverpool. Um, we've just got to be able to put a run of form together. Um 
the bizarre thing is that we've had the most horrendous start to a Premier League, I think, ever. Um, yet we're still in touching distance mm. of, 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 of being out of the relegation zone, which is bizarre considering we're mm. nearly at Christmas. So there is chance. Uh, I think Wilder, um, he's, he's got to have a good kind of first month in the club, see how we get on. We've got to pick up a few wins. Um, but I think he's a real tough ass for us to stay up this season. It really is. Even yeah. the most optimistic, optimistic amongst us would, would, would argue that I think finishing the season off in respect is kind of what we're hoping for. If we can get anything more than that, that's a, that's a big win. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like the bottom three are slowly getting a bit further away. I, th- I think Forrest potentially could have been dragged down into it. They've got a new manager now, so maybe they've seen that and acted on it. Um, but, you know, like looking ahead to Friday, like... You know, I'm going to ask you about Cameron Archer sort of specifically in a minute, I guess. But, you know, who are um, Sheffield's main threats do you think that Villa have to worry about? Um, well, if we come back to Cameron Archer in a bit, I think Gus, Gus Harmer has been a, a superb signing for us from Coventry. I don't know how much people know about him. I, I didn't know masters about him, but I knew he had a good year in with Coventry last year. But he's a class act. He's He's, he's a real class act. Creative, he's energetic. You know, he 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 is. You know, he's a bit of a driving force. So that, that it's great to have, great to have him in the side. Um, I mean, Mick Burney's probably been uh, one of our best players this year. You know, he's kind of a bit of a love or hate character, Ollie Mick Burney. He keeps getting himself sent off, but he's you know he's not suspended for Fridays. So, uh, um, you know, Mick Burney works incredibly hard. He doesn't get as many goals as you'd like for a, kind of a striker, um, but he he works hard and he makes it hard for. Uh, defences and, and actually if you can get McBurney and Archer playing properly together I think there will be a, a decent partnership um, I've got a young lad um, that Wilder's just brought straight into the team called Andre Brooks um, really impressed with him um, kind of a little bit fearless runs at players um, you know, got a lot of creativity in him um, James McAtee brilliant brilliant for us uh, last season when we got promoted um, probably not quite had the same uh, run of form this year, but that goal he scored against Brentford was was class. And actually, he's getting better and better as 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 he finds his feet in the back in the Premier League. And then Archer, yeah, I mean, obviously we we signed Archer from you guys, didn't we? Um, mm. uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant talent. Um, he he kind of he scored some, he scored a couple of good goals. You know what? Probably, he scored, I think he scored two. Uh, he scored that third against Pickford that bounced off his back and went into the net. You know, he, he can he can look very, very dangerous. I think the part of the problem is that he's been left really quite isolated for, mm. for most of the season. He's a small lad trying to play against kind of Premier League defences. He's kind of leaving a little bit isolated. But under Wilder, slightly different formation uh, has really brought him into the game. He, he really looked like a first-class striker against um against Brentford the other night. Really impressed with him. Re- really looked like he's starting to grow up. So yeah, that, that that's kind of where I see some of our threat. And I mean the main problem for us has been conceding goals. We have mm. conceded more goals than I can ever recall. And um if while well, there's one thing, if he stops that leaking shit, that's gonna be the you know, that's gonna be our kind of main focus. And if we can kind of squeeze a few breakaway goals, that's gonna be gonna be good enough for us to squeeze a one nil win. Mm, now that was always the concern, the, uh, the confusion for me with Sheffield United, considering as many as they were. It felt to me like I always thought Sheffield United tend to be hard to beat. Uh, and if they ever lose, it tends to be quite tight. It's not like, you know, teams don't walk over them usually. Um, so some of the results this season have been quite a surprise. Um, but as you say, you know, I, the first thing I imagine Wilder will be doing going into Sheffield is building from the back and sorting that out. Um, but with Cameron Archer, you know, £18 million pounds from Villa to Sheffield, I think Villa fans, we had really high hopes for him. Um, is, do you think he's a Premier League striker from what you've seen? Um, yeah, I think I think absolutely he can be. I mean, he's, he's young, isn't he? He's kind of, he's not got that many games are under his belt. I'm not sure how many games he played for you in the Premier League if he played any, but you know, he's not had much opportunity to play in the Premier League. No. Um yeah, I think he was on a loan loan at Middlesbrough last year, was he? Uh, I mm. think was it Borough? I think he had a good season. Um I think if if we go down, and we probably will, I hope we don't, but if we go down, I think he will be superb in the championship next year. Mm. Um but he, he's young, he's talented, he's got uh great vision, good skill. He's got 
hell of a shot on him, um, regardless of where he is. I think he just needs to find his where he fits into that kind of that formation and, and trying to play a formation that, that suits him. Having McAtee and McBurney and you know Andre Brooks and Harmer, you know, we got, got a bad creative side behind him. Um, um, yeah, I think I think I think we, he is growing into the season. Um, I yeah. think I think he, he could easily end up with with ten goals this season, which for a club that's on its way to, at the very bottom of the league, you know, that's that's a pretty good return in a club that's struggling. So I don't know I, if, if he could get to ten goals, I think that'd be a superb season. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm really impressed with him. He's, he's absolutely got a, a massive career ahead of him. Okay, yeah, he's he's always <clears throat> since he started scoring on loan a couple of seasons ago. I think it was a Preston, I want to say maybe. Uh, always just felt like there was something there with him, something to watch. So it's great to hear that uh, that he's doing that at Sheffield. Um, but you know, looking ahead to Villa, um, you know, I feel like I'm living in a parallel universe where everything I've ever dreamt actually happens with Aston Villa. It's the most extraordinary time, you know, 15 home wins in a row, uh, elite manager in Unai Emery, um, beat Man City and Arsenal three days apart. Go to Brentford away and win at one of the hardest away days you're going to get. Um, you know, as a Sheffield fan going to Villa away, like how does it feel at the moment? Like, what what are your thoughts on it? Um, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's incredible, incredible season for Villa, isn't it? You know, it's <laughs> yeah. kind of taken everyone by surprise. I, I don't know if you remember, Frank, uh, a few years ago, the goal that never was when we drew nil-nil with you guys. <laughs> and the ball went over the line. That was a great and, save. And, kept, I can't believe he kept it uh, uh, off the line. <laughs> but, that you know, that point, I think, kept you in the Premier League that season. <laughs> I think it genuinely did. Um, yeah. So I, I think you owe us a favour over that one. But, um, yeah, yeah, incredible. And, and you know, look, look at the, the talent you've got in the team. Um, I went to... I went to um, to Wembley to watch England versus uh, Australia in a friendly with my two boys uh, took them to their first England game for the week and Ollie Watkins led the line and he is he is a class striker uh, he is a good striker you know building a team around him he's he's just you know, he's he was probably like you know, the same level of what, uh, what 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 Cameron Archer was two two three years ago isn't he that he's that kind of level of talent but yeah really solid team difficult to play against goals in them. Do, do I feel worried about going to going to Villa? No, uh, but um, you know I think we kind of resigned ourselves that we'll struggle to pick up points against the top sides, particularly away from home. I think for us, it's about keeping that goal difference down. You know, putting up a good fight. No, I'm not not saying we're not saying we're kind of going to be walkovers. I mean, we were mm. beating Tottenham away uh, till the 97th minute whilst they were in the in the um, in, in, in first place. And we lost that one two one. But um, <laughs> Unbelievable. yeah, I, I, you know it's. It's, it's tough for a bottom club with very limited confidence and knowing that we've got so few goals in mm. us at the moment. But that's the big issue, isn't it? If you know you're conceding goals and you're struggling to kind of put them in the other end, every time you go away from home, you're naturally going to play a cautious game. And that can sometimes be, um, you know, it's our detriment, really. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how we get on. Um, I think we've got a new lease of life under Wilder, which is always good. We just need to embrace that whilst it's still there. Yeah, I think I kind of think that's my slight fear with this is that I think with you know Villa have won 15 in a row at home, obviously. And so suddenly now it becomes a thing that I think teams look at and go, We want to be the team to end that run. Um, and with Sheffield United, you know, if if bottom of the league but need the points, you know, I could imagine Chris Wilder really getting into the the players this week to say, This is a big chance here to make a statement and you know put it out that actually we can prove something against Villa. And you know, Villa away from home this season we've struggled to deal with well not necessarily struggled but we've we've had moments where we've not always found it easy to break down a low block now at home we've always found a way through but away there have been moments where that's been difficult um so i actually think this friday is going to be quite a bit tighter than on paper it's probably looks like it will be i i think we'll we'll give you a tough game if i'm honest um yeah. I think we're up for it. I think we've got a bit of confidence behind us. I know we've we've lo- we've lost two of the three while there's been in charge, but you know, they were against Chelsea, against Liverpool. I know, I know you're up there. You know, you're 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 one of the top clubs in the league these days. But I, I think we'll give you a, a tough game. That's my that's my prediction. I think we've shored up our defence. We're harder to break down. Got a bit more creativity. A bit more compact. Um, I, I think. I think we will struggle to score many goals away at you, but I think 
Um, I, I can imagine it'd be quite a tight game. And, you know, you guys are under pressure to try and get that top spot of the league. That's what you won, isn't it? Mm. I think, when, when was the last time Villa were top of the league? Um, think, but I, I think it might have been like 2008-ish, very briefly. Um, but I think the, the last time we were regularly top of the league was about 1998-99 season. Uh, top of the league till about December and then absolutely blew it. <laughs> so hopefully you're not the I think Blackburn were one of the teams that really turned it around for us to go terrible that season so hopefully Sheffield United don't end up being that other northern powerhouse that causes problems for us I hope we are to be honest Frankie <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, need the talking. points yeah no we don't you know, you know I've always been a I've always been a uh, I've always quite liked Villa uh, probably because you know I, I know you've always loved Villa but yeah I, I do hope we I hope we give you a tough game um, I, I think it'd be interesting definitely I agree. I think it's going. To, I think it's going to be a lot tighter than it looks on paper. Um, do you have a score prediction? Um, I think we're going to score. Okay, uh, but I think I think you'll score more than us. So I think <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go a two-one Villa win. That's the pessimist in me, unfortunately. Okay. I mean, to be to be fair, uh, even though we've been on a very good run, we have tended to concede goals at home. Um, bizarrely, we didn't concede against City or Arsenal, but we we have conceded in you know against. Fulham and you know a fair few other teams that you probably think we wouldn't do compared to City and Arsenal. So that high line, if you can if you can break the high line with a well timed run, you'll probably get a one on one at some point. Um, so I think that's the key thing. Whether you've got a player with pace who can run from deep and try and beat that high line, maybe that's Cameron Archer. Um, I think with Villa, I, I I think it will be tougher against Sheffield, as I say, than I think it is on paper because I think if you sit with a very compact type block. And hit us on the break. I, th- I don't think that's easy to break down. Um, I'm going to say two nil. I think we're going to go two nil. I think we'll keep. I think we'll just about to keep the clean sheet. And I'm going to say Leon Bailey and Zaniolo. Zaniolo is going to get his first Premier League goal. Is my prediction because he's looking a bit confident after he got his goal in Europe. Uh, and Leon Bailey is just an absolute fire at the moment. So, yeah. That's, that's my prediction. But something I want to ask you as well, though, uh, you know, Sheffield United are a massive club, right? You know, historic club. You know, historically not dissimilar to Villa in the sense like a big city, big fan base. And I think Sheffield Wednesday are quite similar. So what is it with Sheffield United, do you think, that you can never, you don't seem to quite be able to establish yourself in the Premier League? Like you, you'll get up and then you'll be, you'll be there for two or three seasons or one season, and then you'll be back down. What, what, what is it, do you think, that it just doesn't quite seem to, you know, um, we, we don't seem to see Sheffield just establish themselves in the Premier League? Well, I think, I think if, if you look at this season, I mean, look at look at Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United, I think I think I'm genuinely, the gulf is, is big. I don't think we mm. necessarily see it week in, week out, but it is such a different level to when you're playing in the championship. I mean, I don't think we were particularly brilliant last year in the championship, but we had a good squad of players. You know, we we ground out results and we we you know we got we got a really strong finish, came second, you know, good points tally. Um I just think it's a it's a completely different type of game when mm. you come to the Premier League and you go from winning week in, week out, uh, or grinding out results week in, week out to kind of being you know, on the back foot, and I think that's kind of it's a, it's a kind of a bit of a mentality shift a little bit. It's um um I, I remember a few years ago when we we got promoted and we came up and you know everyone was talking about our overlapping wing backs and, <laughs> and we were a bit of a shock to the system, weren't we? Because we came up and played our own football and we didn't kind of do that natural pessimistic thing, you know, kind of we're going to be playing some different clubs, what's going to change our style? Yeah. And and we were exceptional that season. I think we finished eighth or ninth in the league and had a great season. Uh, next season. We didn't. We didn't change. We just played the same way, and you know, by that time, clubs had figured us out. Um, you know, we lost some players to injuries, and um, and we kind of lost that confidence. Mm. I, I I don't know what this might sound completely <laughs> random, but um, it's a little bit like watching England play Test cricket. You know, when you cut, you know, England could have been the best. You uh, are oh, the best. What well, were until this World Cup? The best twenty twenty side in the world. Smashed the ball around the ground best kind of uh, one-day international team in the world, win the World Cups of both. And then you watch them a few years ago playing a test match and they'd come out and they'd, you know, they'd just block the ball and 
you know, mm. someone would be around for 40 balls and make three runs. <laughs> and, you know, they'd be proud to get a score over over 200 in the first innings. Yet, if they were playing 20, 20 or one day, they'd be happily chasing down 350, 400 runs on a one day international. And it's kind of a bit like that mindset that I think that sometimes we kind of we come into the Premier League and we get into that test England a former test match mode where we <laughs> you know, just block. Let's try and be really cautious. Let's not concede too many goals. But by doing that, you don't score many goals, and then you can't concede in them, and just the confidence starts to to disappear. And you know, you compare us back to kind of what Ben Stokes and Brendan McCullough have done now. They've gone just, just don't don't care. <laughs> just just get out there and just just play the same way as you did and. I think I think some of that kind of bit of that license to be creative and bold and not being fearful that you're going to concede goals and I think it's that fear factor that mm. we can't concede too many because we're going to not score many. Now that mentality, I've seen it this year. They were just 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 too cautious, not creating any chances. And let's be frank, if you're not con- if you if you're not creating chances, you're not going to win games. You're mm. not going to stay up. And you know, you talked a minute ago that Villa have conceded a number of goals this season. That's fine because you're creating, you know, you're bold, you're ambitious, you're creating chances, you're scoring goals at the other end. Even last week, you came back. I don't know you were you were in a tough predicament last week, weren't you, against uh, Brentford, you know, one nil mm-hmm. down, and you know you, you turned it around two one. I think yeah. that's is a mentality thing. At one regard, the other side of it is that just the quality of players. Yeah. Um, and you know, we haven't had much much investment in the squad at all. Um, we've had. No, Harmer was a great signing. Cameron Archer was a great signing. It's great that we've got McAtee on loan this season. Uh, we we brought in some fairly decent-ish utility players for kind of you know, two, three, four million quid, but they're not. We we haven't bought them to be ready-made Premier League level. That they're, they're kind of acquisitions for the future, and I think that that's kind of the the problem. We haven't got that inbuilt quality in the team, and that's why it was such a. Uh, when we lost Sander Berger and Ilman and Dyer at the start of the year, they were kind of Premier League quality, ready to go and step up. And uh, yeah, just just that lack of experience, that lack of quality. I think we'll if we have a good second half of the season, we'll start to gain some of that quality and that composure. Mm. It's not over yet, but it, it's really tough. It is really tough to um, to come up with with almost no budget to spend. If you look at what we spent this summer, um, you know we we spent probably just slightly less than what we got in sales. So mm. no, we, we haven't really invested massively in the club. The irony of it is if we go down, we get that big cash payout of 150 million quid, which, you know, if they change the rules that you got that money when you came into the league, you know, it'd be a different ball game then, wouldn't it? But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that kind of that mentality, we got off, we started the season badly. And you start looking at the fixture list, you know, you know we've got some big clubs to play. Where, where are we going to pick up our first points? And yeah, it's tough. But we we shall see. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I relate to that. You know, Villa when we came back up from the Championship just three years ago, you know, there were weeks where I'd look at the next fixture and think, where the hell are the, like the points going to come from? Because the, the golf just does seem so vast, uh, and you can see it this season. You know, the three teams at the bottom, the, all three came up from the Championship. It's very rare that's happened. But at the same time, you look at the finances in the Premier League and. It must just be getting harder and harder to come up from the championship and compete in the Premier League uh, unless you've got an ownership that's, you know, willing to spend a lot. And you know, Forest have done that, but I do. I'll be intrigued to see how that turns out for them with FFP and all that. I mean, it feels like they spent a lot of money and probably not sold a lot of players. So we'll, we'll see how that works out for them. Um, well, it might yeah. work out right for us. <laughs> yeah, like that, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's been great to chat to you, Christian. Great to find out a bit more about Sheffield as well. And I'm sure um, we'll be going up together to Bramall Lane in a month or two. And I'm, to be honest, dreading that fixture because I don't like going to Bramall Lane. And I think if Sheffield had to pick up points this season and pick up quite a few, I wouldn't be surprised if your home form is what does it for you, to be honest. Um, but also, something I want to ask you, something I'm asking all the guests at this time of year, we're all festive. Uh, Christmas movies. What is your recommendation for the uh, all villa, no filler? fan base for the for our fellow villa fans whatever what would you say is your favorite one well um it's got to be one of two films for me i'm afraid uh it's either home alone or home alone 2 and I, i'm going <laughs> to say home alone 2's edged it for me lost in new york how did they, how did, how did they lose in the second time yeah uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it is a brilliant christmas film I, i've got i've got um my two boys, Noah and Jesse, are seven and five. So we are watching all the Christmas films that I watched when I was me and Maddie were boys. And 
no, we, we watched Muppet Christmas Carol, but yeah. onto the Home Alones, and yeah, I love those films. They're brilliant. They've, they've aged really well. They're still absolutely hilarious. Yeah, yeah. when uh, j- j- um, when he plants the tarantula on the burglar's face. <laughs> oh, my, the scream! I think is it <laughs> Harry Marv? One of the uh, yeah puts it on his face, and the scream is just. One of the funniest moments in cinematic history, I think. Um, my Christmas film, I mentioned it yesterday. Uh, not one to show the boys just yet, but uh, Die Hard. Um, Alan Rickman and his squad of German male models uh, taking on Bruce Willis in the Nakatomi Plaza. It's uh, you can't, you can't, I love it. Endlessly quotable. So, some argue it's not a Christmas film, though, Frankie. Some would argue, but they'd be wrong. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd say, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs>